Welcome once again. Today we are going to study another MOOCs lecture on BP 103T of uh, pharmaceutics and this unit is entirely dedicated to semi solid dosage form. So, we are going to study semi solid dosage form in this unit. Uh, I am Anjali Mishra, assistant prof professor at Noida Institute of Engineering and Technology Pharmacy Institute. So, let us start with this unit. So, as you all can see here I have written introduction to semi solid dosage form. So, whenever we hear this word semi solid, so what is the very first thing that strike us? So, when I say that we are studying about semi solid, so let us understand what is the meaning of semi solid. Semi solid means anything that is not entirely in solid state nor that thing is entirely in the liquid state. So, we are dealing with something that lies between these two states that is between liquid and between solid. So, this entire unit is dedicated to all the dosage form that are uh, clubbed under a title known as semi solid dosage form. So, uh, from the childhood we might hear, uh, uh, hear about this word semi solid. So, whenever we hear semi solid the thing that strike us is creams paste, jellies, gels. So, all these things are categorized under semi solid dosage form. So, let us understand the basic definition of semi solid dosage form. So, let us understand the definition. Semi solid dosage forms are products of semi solid consistency. So, what is the major thing that we have to emphasize here is semi solid consistency. The consistency of these things whatever that is characterized under semi solid are known are of semi solid consistency and they are applied to skin or to the mucous membrane for therapeutic or protective action and sometimes even for the cosmetic function. So, whatever semi solid products we are applying either they are of for uh, therapeutic action or sometimes it could be for the production of emollients purpose as well for making skin surface smooth. So, it could be for this purpose as well that is nothing but the protective function. Sometimes we also need these things like for enhancing the appearance of any particular area, any particular organ. So, for that purpose also whatever products we are using majorly those products are categorized under semi solid products only. So, these products can also be used for cosmetic purposes. Now, let us understand under how many classifications semi solid dosage form occurs. So, majorly when we try to classify semi solid dosage form, they are majorly classified into medicated semi solid dosage form and non medicated semi solid dosage form. So, these phrases are very much crystal clear. So, what they want to say is crystal clear. See medicated dosage form means what? Any dosage form that is that is going to produce any biological response are classified under as medicated dosage form. In the same manner what is non medicated dosage form? Anything that is used apart from producing biological action are classified under as non medicated dosage form. Dosage form. So, majorly we have classified our semi solid dosage form into two categories that is medicated dosage form and non medicated dosage form. Further. Uh, moving on and elaborating the semi solid dosage form, we are going to study certain points. The very first point is that semi solid dosage form are intended for topical application majorly and are non invasive delivery system. So, this is a very, very vital point that we are supposed to study here that semi solid dosage forms are majorly applied for topical purpose. Now, here I would like to make this word topical to be more precise. Topical formulations are any of the formulation that are applied to the skin surface. For example, if I apply anything on my, uh, on my hand, so anything that is applied onto the external surface are classified as topical formulations and majorly these formulations are non-invasive. So, what is the meaning of non-invasive? Non-invasive means we are not supposed to invade these formulations into any of the body cavities or any of the particular tissue. So, there are so many advantages of semi-solid dosage form. They are applied for the skin placed on the eye surface and also intranasally. Sometimes these topical formulations are intended to be applied onto the skin surface. Sometimes they are even given intranasally or to the any of the body cavity and 
Moreover, here we are also applying it onto the ice surface, onto the conjunctiva layer as well. So, semi-solid dosage form had got, had got its variety of uses and they are applied on va uh, various body parts. Also, sometimes they are introduced into the body cavities like vagina or into rectum. So, here I would like to introduce one more term here that semi-solid dosage form which are intended to be applied in it into the body cavities are called as suppositories. So, these are also cl classified under as semi-solid dosage form only. So, and majorly they are applied into the body cavities. Now, they tend to provide local and systemic effects. So, semi-solid dosage form do not always produce the local effect only. Sometimes they are also intended to give systemic effects. So, what is the meaning of local effect? Local effect means anything that you apply onto the uh, particular area that medication that you apply is going to provide action only to that particular area. So, such kind of effects are nothing but the local effects. Now, systemic effects means what? Systemic effect is an effect that is going to produce on entire of the body. Suppose if I eat a medicine and that medicine enters my GI tract. However, that medicine is going to show its effect onto my entire body. So, here that medication is going to provide an effect known as nothing but the systemic effect. So, semi-solid dosage forms necessarily do not provide only local effect, they are also known to provide systemic effect as well. Some of the example of local effect includes here treatment of dermal disorders, yes it could be psoriasis, it could be eczema, it could be any sort of bacterial or fungal infection that occurs onto the skin surface. So, for that purpose we can definitely use semi-solid dosage form to treat that disorder. Now, here uh, this was about local effect. Topical formulations do also provide systemic effect just now we have seen that. Here that examples include delivering drugs through transdermal route. So, if I want to deliver a drug through transdermal route in that case also I can choose semi-solid dosage form. So, semi-solid dosage form not only provide action topically or not only give local action they do have the potency to provide action entirely to the entire body or to the systemic route as well. Moving on further, when we are formulating any formulation known as semi-solid dosage form, there are certain characteristics that we are supposed to know. Uh, so, there are certain ideal properties of semi-solid dosage form that we are supposed to study. These properties are further classified it into physical properties and physiological properties. So, uh, when the semi-solid dosage form that we have formulated do uh, have certain kind of physical characteristics and some physiological characteristic. So, let us understand what are these physical or physiological characteristics that an ideal semi-solid dosage form must follow. So, moving on to the physical characteristics, it should have a smooth texture. Obviously, if we are applying any formulations on the skin surface, it is mandatory that the formulation must have a smooth texture. If just imagine if the formulation contain anything that is gritty in nature or it is not that smooth. It is, it, it is going to be definitely difficult for a patient to apply that formulation and definitely that is not at all acceptable for a formulator as well as for a patient that is going to apply that semi-solid dosage form. So, what is the first and foremost ideal property that the formulation must be smooth in texture. Another thing that it should be elegant in appearance, yes, whenever we are formulating any dosage form, the very first thing that an uh, formulator or an acceptor or a patient that buys it, firstly the aesthetic value of that formulation must be very high. If the formulation does not look good to our eye, we are not definitely going to buy that formulation. So, second and third, uh, second most important thing for a semi-solid dosage form is that it should have a very elegancy in its appearance. Then it should be non-dehydrating. Definitely whatever we are applying on the skin surface, if it dehydrates the skin, it is a completely no thing for us. So, whatever we are applying onto the external surface, it should have a dehyd it should not have a dehydrating effect. In fact, it should it should soothe it should soothe the particular area from where you are applying it. So, dehydrating effect is a completely undesirable phenomena if you are formulating a semi-solid dosage form. Another thing, it should be non-gritty as I discussed in the first formulation that it should have a smooth texture. So, in 
collaboration to that, it should nev never be gritty, gritty in nature. So, grittiness is nothing but it is an unwanted feeling of particle in a particular formulation. If your semi-solid dosage form contains any particle that you can feel, it is it won't be acceptable for any patient to apply that formulation because it is going to produce uncomfortableness or it is going to produce uneasiness for any patient. Then it should be non-greasy and it should be non-staining. Definitely whatever formulations we are applying it should be non-greasy because anything that is too oily or it is too greasy is a completely no for a patient who is even going to accept it. And another thing that it should be non-staining. For example, if a sem semi-solid dosage form stains your cloth, you are not going to use that formulation once again. So, ideal property or ideal physical property of a semi-solid dosage form is that it should be non-staining. It should neither stain your cloth nor, nor it should stain your uh, area or the skin surface where you are applying it. Now, the last physical property or the ideal physical property should be it should be non-hygroscopic. Now, what is the meaning of hygroscopic? Hygroscopic is a term which is used when a uh, substance um, collects or entraps the moisture that is present around it. So, if your formulation accepts or entraps the moisture that is going to present around it, what happens? It may change its states or what may happen? It may, um, be, it may become delicacent, it may lose its stability or it, there are chances that it may, um, it may grow uh, bacteria, it may grow many microbes. So, definitely it should be non-hygroscopic. So, these were some of the physical properties that we look for into an ideal semi-solid dosage form. Now, let us understand about the physiological properties of an ideal semi-solid dosage form. First is, it should be non-irritating. Definitely non-irritating means what? Whenever we are applying any solid, semi-solid dosage form onto a skin, skin surface, the um, that skin surface onto which the semi-solid dosage form is applied must not get irritated, must not get inflamed because if such things happen, that patient who has taken that medication is not going to continue. So, definitely whatever semi-solid dosage form we are applying, it should completely be non-irritating. Another thing, it should be miscible with skin secretion. Now, what are the major, major skin secretion? We have, um, uh, saliva, we have uh, sebum, we have sweat. So, what are the major skin secretion are present in, so, into our body? Our semi-solid dosage form must get miscible with that skin secretion as well. Because if it does not get miscible with that skin secretion, there could be change of the state or the proper um, entrapment or proper penetration of that semi-solid dosage form won't occur. Now, the last physical property that we look for into a semi-solid dosage form is it should have a low sensitization effect. It should have a low sensitization effect means it should not be very sensitive, it should not be very much easily hygroscopic, it should not become very much unstable as soon as you apply it. So, it, it should have a very low sensitization effect. So, these are some of the parameters that we look for into an ideal dosage form. We have classified these parameters as, as physical properties and into physiological properties. Moving ahead, we have another property that we look for into a semi-solid dosage form and we have categorized that property as application properties. So, whenever we are formulating a semi-solid dosage form, eventually what we are doing is we are applying that formulation onto a skin surface or into a mucous membrane. So, application properties plays a very vital role in, in understanding and estimating the efficacy and potency of semi-solid dosage form. So, Whatever formulating or whatever semi-solid dosage form you are formulating, it should have a very easily application and whenever you are applying that drug, it should efficiently release the amount of drug that is supposed to be released by that particular formulation. Because eventually what we require is proper release of the medicaments from that formulation. So, what, whenever you are applying that formulation, it should be able to release that formulation properly. Then another application property is it should be highly aqueous washability. Aqueous washability means what? Whenever you are applying any medication and you do, and you desire to be and you desire to remove that application from that surface, so it should be easily water washable. It means when you wash it under uh, tap water, it should be easily removable. It should be non greasy. So that are some of the application properties that are classified under application properties of semi solid dosage form. Moving ahead. 
uh, we just now saw, saw what are the ideal properties of semi solid dosage form. So, let us consider that why are we moving or accepting this dosage form in uh, various formulation parameters. So, let us understand the advantages of solid dosage form or semi solid dosage form. First of all, it is used externally, definitely it is used externally. Just now as I said in the first slide that whenever we are applying our um, topical dosage form, we are always applying that dos dosage form externally and it is non-invasive in nature. So, whenever uh, it is used externally, the chances of side effects can be minimized to a higher extent. So, this is the first advantage of semi-solid dosage form. Another advantage is probability of side effects can be reduced. Yes, definitely correlating it from the first point when we are applying anything externally or to the mucous membrane, the probability of side effects can be definitely lowered and this is one of the most advantages of this formulation. Another thing we have to avoid the first pass metabolism. First pass metabolism is me, uh, what is the meaning of first pass metabolism? First pass metabolism is the metabolism that is done by our GI tract. So, uh, if your medication do not enter your GI tract, there, there are no chances that it is going to enter the first pass metabolism. And what is the major disadvantage is that in first pass metabolism, majority of our drugs get deteriorated by the uh, extreme gastric pH. So, so, here if you are applying anything externally or topically, there are no chances of that drug go undergoing the first pass metabolism. Another thing, it should it produces a local and targeted response. Yes, this point is very important. Whenever we are applying semi-solid dosage form, it produces a local action. Whenever uh, if I have a um, injury on my elbow and if I am applying that semi-solid dosage form on my, on my elbow, it is going to uh, give my give response on that particular area only. So, can I say that the dosage form produces local and at the same time it is going to give a targeted and highly effective response which is very much desirable when we want a quick biological response. Another advantage is that convenient it is for unconscious patient as well. So, if a patient is unconscious, it is very easy to administer semi-solid dosage form also to that patient. Uh, so, this is another advantage of semi-solid dosage form. Another thing, it is best suitable for bitter and for unpleasant drugs because semi-solid dosage forms, do, you do not engulf that particular into, a, into your GI system. So, if any, system, if any drug is bitter or if it has got an unpleasant taste or odor, there are, there, uh, that drug can also be formulated in semi-solid dosage form. So, this is one more advantage eventually concluding that it is more stable than liquid dosage form. Obviously, in liquid dosage form, we, we use vehicle to a larger extent. So, there are high chances of that liquid dosage form getting um, attacked by microbes. Such we do, such case do not happen when we take semi-solid dosage form. So, here some of the, uh, here we saw some of the important points or the advantages of semi-solid dosage form. Moving ahead, as we all know that each and every coin has got its two sides that is advantages and disadvantages. Just now we saw the advantages of semi-solid dosage form. Here we are going to understand the disadvantages of semi-solid dosage form. First is no dose accuracy. Obviously, when we are uh, and when we are told by any uh, physician that you apply this cream onto a particular area. So, we do not know how much scoop full of the cream has to be applied. We do not know how, what exactly the quantity of the uh, medicaments must be applied uh, to, a, to that surface. Sometimes we take less dose, sometimes we may end up taking more dose. So, that happens. So, we can say that dose accuracy is often a, a major disadvantage when it comes to your semi-solid dosage form. Uh, then another disadvantage is base have tendency to get easily oxidized. Now, here we are looking for this word base. As we are going to move ahead in this slides or into this chapter, we are going to have a detailed look on to what is base actually. Here I would like to in a, in a very short way, I would like to uh, explain what is base actually. When we want to prepare ointment, when we want to prepare ointment, so for that purpose we are going to require two important things. The very first important thing is that we are going to require API. Now what is API? API is active pharmaceutical ingredient that is going to evoke a particular biological response. Now, in addition to this API, we also need something that is nothing but your base because we need something into which we need to incorporate API. As a result, that is nothing but your base. So, moving ahead, so the base that we are using 
in the formulation of a semi solid dosage form that may get easily oxidized. Sometimes what happened staining may also occurs and staining is definitely a no when it comes to your semi solid dosage form. Now sometimes it is bulky to handle yes because uh, if, if it is supplied in mostly into jars, containers or into, or into tubes so definitely it is very much bulky to handle. Then application with finger or hands may lead to contamination. Semi solid dosage forms are oftenly uh, said to be uh, applied with your finger or with your hands. So chances of contamination is quite high when it comes to your semi solid dosage form. Then physiologically less stable as compared to solid dosage form. Yes, when we compare semi solid and liquid the stability of solid dosage form is obviously higher as compared to your semi solid dosage form. So, these are some of the disadvantages of semi solid dosage form. Moving ahead, we are going to understand that what are the different types of semi solid dosage form. The very first type is your ointment, another thing is creams, then we have pastes, another is gels, poultices, plaster, and suppositories. So, we are going to understand each and every types of semi solid dosage form in, in a detailed manner. However, here we have just un, uh, just given a list of or the classification of semi solid dosage form. So, they are majorly classified into ointments, into creams, into pastes, into gels, into poultices, into plaster or into suppositories. Sometimes what may happen here is we often uh, get mistaken or we often think that ointments, creams, space, gels are nothing but they are all same. However, in the next lecture of this session only we are going to understand each and every formulation in a detailed manner that what is the major difference between ointments and what is the major difference between creams, gels, paste and uh, plaster suppositories how each and every uh, thing get differ from each other and what are the major uh, differences into which we are have we have actually classified of um, uh, ointments creams gels and everything so we are we are going to have a detailed discussion on each and every type uh, just now I have discussed here, uh, each and every type is different from each other. So, what makes them different? We are going to learn each and everything into the next session and um, here I would like to say that classification means they have been divided into various uh, groups. It means that ointments are different, creams are different, plasters are different, suppositories are different. So, each and everything are being divided into certain categories. So, what makes them different? What are the different key role that they have to be uh, incorporated into it and uh, what are the uh, special packaging of each and every formulation? We are going to study each and every parameters into detail. So, this uh, entraps everything about semi solid dosage form. Semi solid dosage form, let us have a quick revision of what we have studied in this topic. So, first of all, we uh, studied about what is semi solid dosage form, then later on, we studied about uh, what are the uh, properties of an ideal semi solid dosage form. Ideal semi solid dosage form, uh, it had so many properties that were related to physical characteristics, so various properties related to physiological characteristics, and later on, we saw about the application properties. So, there were so many factors that were uh, made in order to understand that how an ideal semi solid dosage form works. Then we just moved towards uh, understanding that what are the advantages and disadvantages of semi solid dosage forms. Because we know that whenever we are formulating a particular dosage form, it has got so many advantages, but at the same time it had various disadvantages as well. So, we have covered everything about the advantages and the disadvantages in the previous in the slides that we just now uh, saw. Then later on we saw about the uh, types and the classification of uh, various ointments and uh, this uh, club's entire thing about semi solid dosage form. So, I hope this session uh, uh, was very informative for everyone. Thank you so much.